Hey guys, it's John P with Geek Beat TV and on today's show we're going to take a look at one of the most versatile welders in the world, the Lincoln Power MIG 180 Dual. This episode of Geek Beat is brought to you by Carbonite. Okay guys, you might remember a few weeks ago Lincoln sent us this little welder for review and I've been playing with it and here we are, we're going to do a massive, complete review like we've never done before actually. So uh, what's going to happen is this review is going to go out in several different pieces, meaning for those of you watching this as a podcast, you're only going to see part of it. That's because we don't want to bore you with all kinds of detail if you don't need it. However, I am highly recommending this thing to be the one welder you get if you don't have one yet and to help you out in case you buy one, we're doing a complete detailed step by step walkthrough of how to set it up and get it all ready to weld. So if you want all those details, head on over to the blog at geeky.tv, do a search for Power MIG and you're going to come across the whole series step by step on this bad boy. But for now what we're going to do is I'm going to give you the overview and talk about why this thing is so great. We'll look at what it comes with and other stuff that you might need to go along with the welder. Okay, so uh, one of the things I really like about this welder is that its price point is a sweet spot between really cheap, almost toy-like welders and the big industrial kind of commercial welders. So you'll look back here, you'll see that I have these two gigantic welders. These things are very expensive, they're heavy, they require 220 power. You can really only use them in a shop. On the other end, if you remember the welding video I did, the how to weld tutorial, we went to Lowe's and we picked up a little small Lincoln welder that was really cheap. Those are great to get you started. The problem is you outgrow them very quickly. This thing comes in at about a thousand dollars, so it's right in between the price points, but it's something that you can not only start with, but you can continue to use as you get better at welding. And one of the big things that makes that possible is the fact that this is a dual voltage welder. You can either use 110 outlet, which everybody in the US has in their home, or you can use a 220 outlet for more capability, more capacity, etc. So let's take a look at everything you get when you buy one of these uh, welders and then we'll go through a step-by-step -step process of setting it up. Okay, so here we go. Let's look at everything you get in the box. First of all, we get the actual welder itself. So this machine is about, oh, I'd say about oh, 50 to 60 pounds. So it's heavy, but it's not immovable. Um, it has a door that opens up here and we'll get into why it does that but uh, you get all the good guts in here. And one of the things I really, really love about the way Lincoln does their stuff is they give us this nice chart. I don't have to remember any settings. All I have to do is refer to the chart. Now it takes a little practice learning how to read the chart, but once you know, it's all there so you don't have to memorize it. So that's good. Um, other than that, it's a standard box. You can have it in any color you want as long as it's red. Okay, other things that come with it. If you want this thing to have power, you're going to have to use an electrical cable. So, as I was saying before, you can use 110 or 220, but they have different types of plugs on them. So, this is the 110, this is the 220, and you'll notice that the other end have identical connectors, so you just kind of screw them in whichever one you're going to use. Nice and simple, no fuss. We're also going to get what's called a gun. This is the MIG gun. This is the trigger and the, the spool of stuff comes shooting out this end and this is just the cable associated with the gun. So the whole thing will plug in together. Now we're going to have a, a work cable as well. This is a six gauge copper cable. It's really heavy duty, well insulated and it will attach to a clamp. This is the work clamp. 
Um, we, of, we often like to call this like a ground wire, but the reality is when you think about grounding, it's usually a neutral and sometimes this is positive and sometimes it's negative. Who knows? So we also get a regulator for our shielding gas. This is only to be used when we're doing MIG welding, not flux core, but we'll have that and we have a little tube that uh, connects it to the tank. We get a two pound spool of mild uh, welding cable. So this is mild steel um, and it's a particular size. It's 0.025. We also get some inner shield flux core wire. This one's already been opened. This is 0.035 size. The sizing is important. Finally, we get a little bag of accessories, uh, all kinds of things here, um, including nozzles and uh, tips and things like that. So that is the basic overview of, of what all we get. Now, for those of you who are really interested, check out the other video because we're going to go in depth. We're going to plug this whole thing in and see how to make it work. Okay, we've got it all plugged in. Now it's time to power it on. There's a little switch on the front, power it on. You'll hear the fan start up, although we're not going to weld anything. There is one other thing we're going to do to make this faster. On the front of our machine, there are two knobs. One is for power, one is for speed. We're going to crank the speed all the way up, put it on 10. I wish it went to 11, but we'll put it on 10 and that's going to make sure that when we squeeze the, uh, the wire, it comes out really fast. In fact, I'll show you. Dave, can you come over here and take a look at this wheel and let's watch. I'm going to turn it all the way down to one and we'll see how slow it goes. I'm squeezing the trigger and you'll see it's making it um, feed pretty slowly. Now, I'm gonna turn up to five. That's five. Now we're gonna go to 10. That's 10, so you can see how fast it is. Now what we're doing is we're just waiting for the material to come out right here. It takes a minute because there's several feet of material coming out of this thing. There it is. That's it. So we're, that's it. We're set. We are ready to start welding. Well, you guys got to skip all the work involved with setting that thing up in detail, but you know what you shouldn't skip? You shouldn't skip the work of backing up all of your important data, both at home and at office, and that is where carbonite comes in. You know, if you have any kind of issue, we're playing with electrical toys here today, but you know, just imagine if something were to happen and you got a short through the home and it hit your computer. You do not want that to be the end of your precious memories, like your wedding photos and baby pictures and work documents. So. For $59.95 a year, you can head on over to Carbonite.com, use co coupon code GEEKBEAT and back up all that stuff in the cloud where it's nice and safe. By the way, when you use our coupon code, you also get two months of free service when you sign up for any plan. You can also get your entire office backed up. It starts at about $229 for unlimited machines in your office. So. Don't let disaster strike and make you cry. Head on over to Carbonite.com, use coupon code GEEKBEAT, and now let's talk about safety for your welding. Okay, first of all, this is the power MIG that we just went through and set up, but you will notice we've done something very different. I have it on a Lincoln Electric cart. This is important because as you can imagine, this thing is heavy by itself. It weighs probably 50 to 60 pounds and that's without having all the cables and plugs attached to it. it makes it a little bit difficult to carry around. But if you're going to attach a, uh, a tank to it and actually do MIG welding, now it's impossible to move easily. So you've got to have a cart. Now this one costs a little over a hundred bucks. I've got links to all of this stuff on the website, on the blog post, which we'll put in the links in the comments. Um, 
the cart's okay. I, I'm not in love with this cart. There's actually a different cart on Amazon that I'll give you a link to that's uh, cheaper and I think a little better. But this one will definitely work. I just kind of prefer the other one. So you need a cart. It'll let you store your stuff on the bottom, a, pl a place to hold the tank, a place to hold this, and it rolls very easily. So that's important. Now, as we are welding, we're going to be burning through material. The whole process of welding is taking two pieces of metal and then filling in the gap with more metal. And that's where these rolls of material come from. So this particular one is a flux cord wire, 0.035. The thing that you need to keep in mind is, as I was saying in our previous videos, you have to go through a specific setup process to use the flux core and you need to pay particular attention to the size you're buying. This is 0.035. They also have 0 0.025, 0 0.045 and when you change the size of your wire, you have to change the size of some of the components in the welder. So keep all that in mind. You can buy the small little uh, rolls or step it up to the bigger 8 inch rolls. These are like 10 pounds plus. Now this one, this is a little super secret trick for you guys. If you take a look, this is called silicon bronze MIG wire. This stuff is beautiful. If you ever want to weld your two pieces of metal together and have a different color welded seam, which is great for artistic stuff, get you some of this. It's not cheap though. Okay, as we are doing all of that stuff, one of the things that's going to happen is our torch, our gun here, the tips are going to wear out. It's normal. It's a consumable item. So here's how we deal with that. First of all, we are going to remove this piece. This is called the nozzle. By the way, uh, when you are using flux core, you don't use this particular nozzle. You use this nozzle. It's, you'll see it's much smaller and it's because it doesn't need shielding gas to come out. So we just stick that on there. But the other thing that we'll see here, which is even more critical, is this little contact tip. Now this has a tiny hole in it and it's what that wire feeds through and conducts the electricity into the wire to make it all work. These tips wear out. It takes a while, but they do wear out. So when they do, we just grab a hold of it with our little pliers. This is another item on the list. I'll talk about this in a second. But we'll grab a hold of that. We'll just loosen it up, unscrew it, and replace it. Now, one thing too I forgot to do, the only thing I forgot to do when we went through our little uh, MIG setup was I didn't change the tip. We were using 0.025 wire, but guess what? The tip that it came with, it's hard to see, but right there it's 0.035. So we're going to rectify that right now and we're going to put a 0.025. You just stick the wire kind of through there, shove it on in. It's really tight because it's a contact tip. It should be tight. So we'll tighten it up like that and then give it one little, not too much, but just a little extra, you know, make sure it's tight there. We will put our shielding gas nozzle back on. And now this is all set up for MIG and it's ready to go. So those little contact tips cost a couple bucks a piece. You'll, uh, you'll wear them out, although they gave you three of each of those two sizes to start with. You also have some other pieces that really are not consumables, but you can buy them additional sizes for those uh, rollers that we went over in the video. Now, when we're welding, let's say we want to weld this piece of material. One really important thing is we open up the side of our welder and we have this beautiful chart that tells us what the setting should be for speed and power on the front. But it's all based on the type of material and the thickness. You can't set it up if you don't know the thickness. So what we can do is use one of two different tools. They make these little ring kind of circular sizers and they have all these gaps. And what we'll do is we'll take it and we will slide it over the edge of the material until we get the one it just fits in. And then we know, oh, that's it. This is 0.070 thickness, or if we turn to the other side, it's 
15 gauge. So now we could go back and we could set it up on that chart. If you want something that will work on different types of material, you could also get some of these digital calipers and then just measure it the same way. It'll give you a digital reading. Um, they're both pretty cheap. Okay. Uh, as we continue on through, we are going to, let's, let's look at the pliers really quick because these pliers are important. They're, they're welding pliers for a reason. If you notice when I was messing with that nozzle, there's a little round part right here that my finger's sticking through. That's perfect for grabbing the nozzles, uh, the contact points to, uh, to remove the, the contact points. Then also there's the wire cutters right here, which are, which are recessed so that we can stick the torch tip right up to it, snip it, and have just the right amount of material sticking out. And then these needle nose pieces here are good for all kinds of stuff you're gonna grab a hold of. But let me show you one bad thing about this pair I have. This is a cheap Chinese knockoff pair, but I want you to watch what happens. You see at the end, they, they move around. That's because they're cheap, and that causes me huge problems. I only bought this to take with me places where I was worried I'd lose them. Invest in a good American pair that's not gonna do that to you because it's worth the extra five or 10 bucks, okay? All right, so we've been through consumables and things like that. Let's talk about safety. The most important thing you can do is protect your eyes, okay? Now, if you buy this power MIG, if you get one of these uh, all the way through March of 2014, they have a rebate. You either get $100 off or they send you this bag full of goodies. And this came with mine. This is the 35, 3350 series welding mask. Now, I want you to notice it has a big, beautiful face uh, shield here. This is an auto darkening helmet. So when I turn it on, I can actually see through the helmet, but when the welding starts, it darkens to protect your eyes. This one is capable of many different shades. You'll see it can either be shade six through nine or nine through 13, and then we, we adjust it. That is because for different power levels and different welding processes, we have to have different darknesses. This is very important. This one also has four different sensors. You can see them right there. There's a little sensor there, there, and a couple down here, and it's got a solar panel down there that charges the batteries. But those four sensors are all looking for a weld spark so that the minute it's detected, this thing darkens, protects your eyes. Very, very important, beautiful, wonderful mask. Highly recommended, love it. Now, what I also like is I like these masks from Save Face. Now this is my kind of really highly customized one. You'll see it's got a custom paint job on it. But what's cool about these is a much smaller auto darkening area. You see, compare the two. I mean, there's no comparison. It's, it's one third or something of that. But all of this black part right here is actually um, see-through, it's just welding helmet kind of see-through. So it is 180 degrees, but only part of it can you see when you're not welding. Um, but God, they're cool looking, aren't they? So those are great. If you had to go the complete opposite end, you could get a cheap Chinese one from Harbor Freight. Uh, the, the Lincoln Electric one is about 225 or like I say, get it in the rebate kit. It's w a, a much better deal. It's, it's, it's way better. But these are like 50 bucks, okay? Now look at the difference in the field of view. Here you have this tiny little screen and here you got this big screen. Not to mention there's only two sensors on this one versus four on this one. It's just a better helmet, protect your eyes. This one also doesn't have the same range I mean, it's not even adjustable. It, it, it really sucks. Okay, so protect your eyes, get a good helmet. Those are the helmet options. Now, one last thing, let's talk about a jacket because you get radiation coming out of the material that you're welding and that will give you sunburn. You'll get weld burn all over your arms, your chest, your neck, it's terrible. So we have to wear a jacket, something with long sleeves. This one from Lincoln Electric is nice because it has two different types of material. For the arms, the sleeves, they're leather. 
That way when I'm working right by the material and things are splattering, it's much tougher. But the part on the back and the front is cotton, which means that it's, it's lighter and cooler when you're in a you know, warm environment, okay? It's a good looking jacket, I like it, they fit nicely, I recommend it. If you're looking for something for uh, a, a more you know, heavy duty welding or in an environment that's colder, I really like this jacket. It's made by Cayman. It is all leather, but it's actually pig skin slash boar skin leather. Notice the interior is lined like a fine men's jacket, the top and the, and the sleeves. So that way, if I have long sleeves on like this and I put them in, it slides in better. And the whole thing is leather and it's black, which is hard to find because most of these are gonna be brown. Okay, I could go on all day with these things, but that's most of what you need. Oh, gloves, thank you for the reminder. We do need gloves. You've got to protect your hands, your eyes, and your jacket. So these are some Lincoln Electric gloves. Um, these are the shorter kind. There are shorter ones, and then there's longer ones. If you're going to wear the shorter ones like this, you have to make sure that your sleeves are going to cover that area in between. So this works, but this would not. I would have a sunburn right there, so you get the longer ones for that. But what you need to look for in the gloves is something that's really soft leather. That way I can grip and move my hands freely without feeling like they're constricted and I can't hold my work materials. Okay, did I forget anything else, Dave? Ah, you were one step ahead of me. Okay, the last thing. Of all the accessories that you absolutely have to have, you need a good angle grinder. You don't need a, one of those cheap, crappy ones because there's all kinds of reasons. I could go on about why. Get yourself a good DeWalt. I really like these. This particular one, you see I got a whole bucket of them here, but I've got many of these. This is a good one because the way you trigger it is you just squeeze the little latch and you pull. When, you, when you're holding it, it starts. When you let go, it stops. So you need a good one because whatever you weld, oftentimes you're going to need to grind the weld away for either aesthetic reasons or to inspect the weld to make sure it's fully welded. So get you one of these and then you got to get these flap discs. You're going to hate flap discs by the time I'm done with you because these things are expensive, okay? There's two different kinds. You can either get these really cheap ones, which uh, they look the same. You could buy these, like this is a no-name Chinese brand, um, but you get like five of them for 10 bucks or you can get the good DeWalt ones, which are like five or six bucks each, okay? Um, and really, they kind of appear the same, except you'll notice these are much denser than these, and these last much longer, but these are really cheap, these are really expensive. You can't win. You've got to spend a lot of money on flat discs. Get used to it. I got a whole shelf full of them up there, so uh, what can I say? All right, guys, that is going to get you started with welding in general. Get your Power MIG 180, get your grinder, get your protective gear, consumables, and go to town, okay? I'm here for you. If you have any questions, tweet them at me, leave them in the comments, drop them on the uh, website, and that's it for this episode of Geek Beat. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thumbs up. I'll see you later. I gotta get to welding.